Welcome to my brand new series of Photography 101. My name is Jimmy Chang, a professional photographer and an Olympus ambassador. Today, I want all of you to help me save photography in this modern digital world. If you're new here, Photography 101 is a series of videos that I make to share my thoughts on specific subjects in photography. Less all about specific equipment, but areas where many photographers, especially beginners, often overlook. If you haven't seen my previous 101, here's my playlist where you can revisit them. Speaking from experience, we photographers are very stubborn, self-centered, and sometimes overconfident about our own photography. I'm also guilty and not immune to these traits. However, you can look at them as a sign of self-belief. You see, regardless of your level in photography, you can always criticize other people's works, even if they are works from master photographers. But the question is, does self-belief help you progress as a photographer? Does self-belief make you better in your own photography? I think it's worth a discussion. To do that, I have to separate these topics into a few areas. If you want to skip through the certain bits, you can do so by clicking directly to the topic in the timecode under the video description. Everyone needs to be confident about him or herself for whatever he or she does. There is no doubt about it. To succeed in a competitive world of creativity, you need to be able to stand on your own two feet. But at the same time, I think you should keep an open mind and learn to listen to criticisms. If they are genuine and constructive, of course. This is a way to improve. Photographers who close their doors in the early stages of their journey would mean only one thing, failure. I've seen too many of them through my career, from those who attended my workshops to photographers I met at exhibitions and events. It's fair to assume that not all critiques are equal. Like I said, except only those that are genuine and constructive. But there are also those who may envy your talent and purposefully trying to shake your confidence and self-belief. I don't often give criticism because my approach is quite direct. And I'm not the type of person who can spin doctor or beautify criticisms. So some may get even a little bit offended by my words. However, I mean good and only do so by telling you how I would approach such photograph. Then again, in photography, it is true that there's no right or wrong because it's your vision and no others. However, to make a great photograph, you need more than just the right exposure and composition. And my critique is usually beyond these standards. As mentioned a few times, I've been a guest judge in many competitions, conducted talks in events and exhibitions. I work with artists and curators, so I'm not the usual Facebook photographer either. Therefore, I make these one-on-one -on -one videos just to provoke your creative mind. Think more deeper than just pixels and numbers. I also believe in giving and taking in photography. You must be open-minded, but at the same time, you should absorb comments, filter out all the rubbish and taking the cream. There you will be able to infuse these comments into your work and continue to improve. There's no limit on how much you learn or how quickly you evolve as a photographer. I'm telling you, digital photography is evolving very rapidly and it's very difficult to keep up with all those changes. But the more you are aware of their existence, the better you can interpret photographs. This video isn't about promoting Michael Four Thirds, but I would like to use it as an example too. I've been a commercial photographer for 16 years and I've been through various different formats through my career from medium format film to 135 or full frame to APS-C and now Michael Four Thirds. I know all the benefits and disadvantages from each system. I chose Michael Four Thirds for very specific reasons and reasons that I believe best suit my photography needs. There are absolutely tons of people who often try to convince me to switch system again, saying that I will get more from them. However, I'm standing for what I believe, my photography and the tool which I use to create my photography. If I don't stand for what I believe, I will fall for anything. And I will be like those who change camera or brand every year or so, floating around and be a gear slave. Remember, when you go to any photo competition, 
Will they judge you by what camera or brand you use? Or will you get brownie points for using medium format over full frame? If you love your photography, you should stand by it together with the tool you use to capture them. Remember, I do not discriminate brands because we are all photographers. All I see is your work. There are many different genres in photography and it's up to you to develop your own following, not by popularity of you, but your photography. There are tons of great photographs online, but equally, there are also tons of total junks out there. It's true that it's a free world and you're entitled to express your photography the way you want. I'm not questioning it, but what I'm questioning is those who want to become a good photograph, yet follow the dark side and trap in the social world. The reason I'm saying this is that photography has turned into a social popularity contest. And this is the very reason why many photographers are not improving at all. The amount of likes on their images do not reflect the quality of them. Worse still, instead of enjoying photography, appreciating the artistic side of it, many have turned themselves into a photographic machine for the sake of posting to maintain their presence on social media. It's a vicious circle. Many have developed some degree of anxiety to force themselves to take photographs for posting every single day. Photography to them has become a byproduct for keeping themselves relevant instead of being creative and vision sharing. If you ever ask any photography master, any, how many of your photos would you consider great to represent your legacy? He or she will most likely say five or six. See, this is what separate master to wannabe. They are more critical to their own works. For a photograph to represent the photographer, it has to be different. A meaning have substance and weight to suck the viewers in. If one says that he can produce one great photograph a day, and post it on social media, and that means he can produce 365 great photographs a year and thousands and thousands through his or her life. Uh, that doesn't make sense, right? I'm not suggesting not to post anything. It's fun, it's your hobby, it's your passion, it's communication. Just don't get too hung up on social reactions, likes or loves icons. Photography has changed dramatically over the past two decades, and increasingly so with the introduction of smartphones. Any image capturing machine can produce a masterpiece, but not everyone can become a master. That is entirely down to you. How much better you want to be. Photography can be a lifelong passion and profession if you want, but who wants to stay at one level for the rest of his or her life? Even when you reach the top, if there's a top in photography, like anything in human history, there will be someone, someday, better than you. So, to become the photographer, the person you want to be, stay on your feet, stand for what you believe, be confident with your vision and tools. Don't blindly fall for anything that anyone tells you. Take criticisms and learn to better and evolve yourself, but at the same time, stay true to who you are. That's it folks, this is the end and you know what to do now. Thumb if you enjoyed this video and sub if you want to see more 101 and other contents. Peace.